Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is a Screencast-O-Matic presentation and recording for the part of the lesson that has us looking at Are Our Elections Rigged? from Upfront Scholastic. Before we get started, please let me encourage you to open up to today's lesson and scroll down the correct section. Please remember to answer the key concept questions that coincide with the reading. Please also remember that you can replay any part of this presentation for detail, clarity, or repetition later on. Let's go ahead and get started. From Upfront Scholastic, are our elections rigged? Critics say gerrymandering has distorted American democracy. Will the Supreme Court put an end to it? Wisconsin has about as many Democrats as Republicans, but you wouldn't know that from looking at the Wisconsin State Legislature. Republicans hold 65% of the seats, a bigger majority than Republican legislators have in a solidly conservative state like Texas. How is that possible? The answer is gerrymandering. Gerrymandering occurs when politicians draw election district maps in a way that gives their party an advantage. After the 2010 census, Republican lawmakers in Wisconsin redrew maps that concentrated as many Democratic voters as possible into a small number of urban districts, removing them from other districts that would have otherwise been competitive. The new maps changed nothing about where people lived, only the district in which their votes were counted. Rearranging districts helped Republicans transform very close statewide vote totals into lopsided legislative majorities. In 2012, the election year, the new district maps took effect, Republicans won less than 49% of the total votes statewide for state assembly candidates, but captured 60 of the body's 99 seats. The situation is in Wisconsin is the focus of a Supreme Court case challenging the constitutionality of gerrymandering. The case of Gill v. Whitford will be decided this spring, along with the second case of Benesek v. Lamone that challenges partisan gerrymandering by Democrats in Maryland. The two cases have huge implications for American democracy. Here are some questions and answers to help you understand why. Why is gerrymandering a big deal? Well, gerrymandering is common practice across the country. Both Democrats and Republicans do it in both state house and congressional districts. Experts say gerrymandering has greatly reduced the number of competitive elections, contributed to partisan gridlock in Washington, and created a situation in which lawmakers don't reflect the political makeup of the population. It's easy to draw maps that essentially read the results one way or the other, says Michael Lee, an expert in gerrymandering at the Brennan Center for Justice at New York University. What that means is that Congress doesn't look like America. It's not representative, and that's not what the framers wanted. They thought the House of Representatives should reflect the people. When did the practice start? So gerrymandering is as almost as old as the nation. The Constitution requires a nation census to be conducted every 10 years to count the population. The next census is in 2020. After every census, the 435 seats in the House of Representatives are reapportioned based on the results. States that gain population get additional members in the House, while those with declining population lose seats. The same principle applies to state legislatures, whose seats are also reapportioned based on the population shifts. Areas that are growing get more representatives, while those that are shrinking get fewer. In most cases, the party in control of the state legislature gets to redraw district lines for both congressional and state house representation. So the term gerrymandering dates back to 1812 when in Massachusetts Governor Elbridge Gerry redrew his state's district lines to benefit his party and weaken the opposition. Critics said the districts he drew were so convoluted that one of them resembled a salamander. How has gerrymandering changed over the centuries? For a long time, gerrymandering involved a lot of guesswork. Politicians in back rooms drew districts by hand and hoped these maps would be able to give them an advantage. Now, computer technology and the vast amounts of data available about all of us enable those drawing the maps to be much more precise. We not only know that you're a Democrat or Republican, we know how strong a Democrat or Republican you are and how likely you are to vote, says Lee. There's no mystery in these maps. They will elect the person they were designed to elect. All of this adds up to a situation, experts say, where in many districts, voters essentially are no longer choosing their representatives. Right now, Elected officials are picking the voters, says Dale Schultz of Wisconsin's Fair Elections Project, instead of the other way around. How does gerrymandering affect who's elected? Both parties use gerrymandering to cement their hold on power and to protect incumbents. A 2012 analysis by the Brennan Center found, for example, that gerrymandering has a significant impact on who gets elected to Congress. In the 17 states where Republicans drew district maps in 2011, their House candidates won about 53% of the overall vote, but 72% of the seats in 2012. In the six states where Democrats drew the lines, their House candidates won about 56% of the vote, but only 71% of those seats. 
in the remaining states, the parties shared control over redistricting or a court or an appointed commissioner drew the lines, or there were no lines to draw because there's only one congressional district too. How does gerrymandering contribute to gridlock? Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick, a Pennsylvania Republican, is one of many who say partisan gerrymandering has contributed to toxic polarization in the House of Representatives. That makes it hard to get things done, the gridlock Americans complain about. The problem, he says, is that gerrymandering has sharply reduced the number of truly competitive congressional districts. For nearly 400 members of Congress whose districts are safely Republican or Democratic, the only real political threat is a primary challenger from their own party. Lawmakers who are worried only about winning primaries tend to favor policies that will please the more extreme members of their party, who are most likely to vote in the primary rather than appealing to more moderate or independent voters who will often tilt the competitive general elections to one party or the other. The result, Fitzpatrick says, is that lawmakers in Congress are far less inclined to compromise with the opposition because doing so only damages their chances of being reelected. It's hurting the American people, Fitzpatrick says. What could the Supreme Court do? Beginning in the 1960s, the Supreme Court established that lawmakers can't draw election maps to intentionally reduce the power of black voters. But the court has never struck down a legislative map drawn to benefit a political party, which is the complaint in the two cases it's now considering. Wisconsin's Republican lawmakers, who are the defendants in the Gill case, say the court shouldn't do so now either. They say the lower court's decision to strike down the maps they drew is, quote, not only wrong, but dangerously so. They argue that allowing challenges to partisan gerrymandering to proceed through the court system will only, quote, increase the federal judiciary's already outsized role in the redistricting process, end quote. But the plaintiffs in the case say the courts have a critical role to play in helping restore the democratic process. You are only institution in the United States that can solve this problem. Paul Smith, the lawyer for the Wisconsin Democrats, who are the plaintiffs, told the justices during oral arguments in October. A group of prominent Republican politicians, both current and former lawmakers, filed briefs urging the court to rule that extreme partisan gerrymandering violates the Constitution. This case is long overdue, says former Republican Senator Alan Simpson of Wyoming, part of the group. Quite literally, gerrymandering is killing our system, and most Americans think politicians are corrupt, and when they're rigging maps to pick their own constituents, they're giving them reason to believe it. But is there any solution? One solution might be to take politicians out of the mix. Lawmakers can't be tempted to draw maps in their own self-interest if they're no longer the ones doing the drawing. Bipartisan or nonbipartisan commissions now draw state house districts in 13 states and congressional districts in six states, Arizona, California, Hawaii, Idaho, New Jersey, and Washington. States in which commissions draw district lines tend to have more competitive races, studies have found. Rick Puddles, an election law expert at New York University, notes that all of the countries that use election districts, the United States, is the only one that doesn't have some kind of independent body to draw those districts. That is an inherently flawed system, Fido says. Even if the Supreme Court does something here, it probably would not get at the root of the problem. The more profound solution would be to take this power out of the hands of politicians. And for clarity, here's an infographic about what gerrymandering looks like. Bizarrely shaped districts drawn to ensure only one party wins more seats. You can see this here by this map. In the Maryland 3rd District, Democrats controlled redistricting in Maryland 2011. In the district in blue, Democratic voters from near Washington, D.C. and Baltimore were combined with a smaller number of Republican voters from more rural areas. Lumping those Republicans from rural areas with so many Democratic voters makes it all but certain that a Democrat will be elected. It also means fewer Republicans in other districts giving Democrats in those districts an advantage. A little opposite can be said here with this map and gerrymandering too. In the Texas 2nd District, in Texas, Republicans controlled the 2011 districting. In this district, in red, suburban Republicans were combined with a smaller number of Democrats in the city of Houston. That makes the district safe for Republicans and also weakens Democrats the rest of Houston. As you can see, there's very few competitive districts. Gerrymandering has helped make the vast majority of the nation's 435 congressional districts safe for the party in power. Only 42 districts are considered competitive between Democrats and Republicans, according to voting experts. So as you guys can see, there are some basic things to know about gerrymandering. But there's also a lot more than what meets the eye. My hope is that you've learned a fair amount from this reading and also from the greater parts of this lesson. Thank you very much for tuning in, and good luck with completing the rest of the lesson.